actually go to church. Um, so you might want to bring them to that. Children are very welcome, but there will be no childcare. There'll be lots of things for them to do in the service. It won't be that long. So, And then on December the 26th, we're having church at home. So we're just having a, a Sunday off, and then you can celebrate um, with Jesus at home together. And I think that's it, right, David? Yes, he's my visuals man. So I just want to hand it over to Micah, who's going to introduce the uh, preacher today. All right. So we get a great guest speaker today. Marilyn Neubauer is here. And um, uh, Rick, Rick had sent an email to me, and, and we got to, to meet Marilyn. We were hanging out in the coffee shop over there, having a great time. I was hearing about her life. Um, and I don't want to spoil too much of her stories because they're amazing, but she, she was healed of cancer miraculously when she was in her 20s, I believe, yes, and um, just got catapulted into ministry, and she travels the world, and she teaches on um, the healing of God, and um, I'm super excited, yeah? So can we give her a warm welcome, Marilyn? <laughs> Thank you. Yes, I'll probably need to. I love it. Penny probably uses two. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I'm honored to be here at this awesome, worshiping, praise filled, happy church. <laughs> so, thank you, Pastor Jesse. And happy birthday. <laughs> and thank you, Pastor Micah and Penny. And so it's, it's, it, it is an honor to be here. And just to tell you a little bit about myself, I was actually baptized when I was 23 days old, and I've been in church ever since. Amen. So there you go. <laughs> yeah, I was baptized in the kitchen sink, actually, because I was sick. But... Um, and then uh, about 25 years ago, the Lord called me into full-time ministry. Otherwise, I'd been in church all my life serving, but went uh, full-time 25 years ago. And so I have been preaching in over 50 countries, taking the message of faith, healing, and triumphant living to the nations. And I've seen so many people touched, changed, transformed by the power of the word. I've seen so many people, well, we were talking earlier, but I, just a few months ago, I was preaching in Pennsylvania, and this lady, they were going to take her to a nursing home because she just was totally immobile. They just couldn't do anything with her. But that night, she got up and walked out of her wheelchair. <laughs> so the nursing home was canceled, <laughs> praise God. <laughs> and I remember one, one year, I was preaching overseas, and um, a man had been struggling, uh, struggling with the effects of a stroke. And so when he walked, he had to drag his left leg. And the right arm was just limp and just hanging there. And at the end of the second service that he sat through, he said, he whispered, he said, I think I feel heat. I feel heat. I said, get up and run. And he got up and he ran all the way around the sanctuary. And as he was coming down the center aisle, his arm was also healed. And he's just go. going like that, <laughs> totally healed. But, you know, you were talking about, I think it was Pastor Penny earlier was talking about how much God loves us. And whether you're saved or unsaved, but I was preaching in Slovakia one year, and I was doing a whole week-long seminar on healing, and this man had the stage four cancer, and his cousin had invited him to come to the service. He says, no, I don't believe in that stuff. I don't want to come. And she says, well, if I was you, stage four cancer, I'd show up. Well, he finally showed up the last night, and then I gave an invitation to pray for the lost. And, but he didn't come up in that line. Now, I knew nothing about his story. I didn't even know anything about him. Uh, but then I had an altar call for, to pray for the sick. And he came up in that line. But I knew by the Holy Ghost that he wasn't saved. And I said, sir, have you ever asked Jesus to come into your life? And he said, no, I have not done that. I said, okay, all right. <laughs> Moving right along. <laughs> I said, oh, I say, well, so uh, what is it that you want here in the prayer line? He said, I just want your God to take away this pain. I just want your God to heal me, but I do not want any of that other stuff. <laughs> and I said, well, sir, I called him sir. I said, sir, my God loves you so much. He wants you healed. And so I prayed for him for healing. 
And then the next night or the next morning, I had to leave early to fly to another country. And I called the pastor. And I says, Pastor, is it possible for you to come to pick me up early so we can go over to that man's house? He's got to get saved. He's stage four cancer. He needs salvation because that's the greatest miracle because that's the only miracle where you're translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ. So that is the greatest miracle. And the pastor said, well, yes, we can go. But before you called, his cousin called. And he had already called her and said, I have no pain today. Wow. Something happened to me. So he was surprised that I showed up at his house. <laughs> and I said, I understand um, my God healed you. And he said, he said yes. He said, I, I, I just know I'm healed. And I said, well, do you remember what that I told you? My God loves you. And this is what he said. I remember, but now I know. And then he got born again. <laughs> so did you, did you come expecting today? Because there's a healer in the house. Amen. So come expecting today. I want to just mention a few things on the table that I have on the back. <clears throat> Holly and uh, Rick will be helping me at the book table at the back. But, you know, when a carpenter builds a house, he uses tools. And we have to build our faith every day. So I have a tool table in the back. There's lots of tools back there. And this is one of my books. It's called Instructions from the Great Physician. You know, God has instructions. If you've got some new software, you've got, even got a brand new car, you're going to have to read the manual. How does this car work, you know? Well, God has instructions, and you need to know the instructions. This book actually went number one on Amazon in two categories a couple years ago. Just two years ago, it went number one on Amazon. But one thing about God's Word, the Bible says it is medicine to your flesh. Not sort of, not kind of. It is medicine. And one thing about God's medicine, it has no negative side effects. <laughs> so, so you cannot, it's absolutely impossible to overdose. <laughs> Who wants this healing book? Right here. This lady right here. This is a really fun thing. Somebody already bought one this morning. This is a laminated card designed to go in the bathroom shower. Because God's word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Don't wait to the end of the day to light your path, and you can do it when you're shampooing your hair. Right? And so there's scriptures on both sides. One's for health, the other one's for wealth. And I chose those two topics because that's the area where the devil will attack you the most, your health or your finances. Health, by his stripes I'm healed. I'm healed of all diseases. I'm strong and healthy. I decree in Jesus' name I'm free of migraine headaches. I have a good memory. Memory. Don't participate. Don't go around saying, I have a, I'm having a senior moment. There's no senior moments with God. There are no senior moments. I have a good memory. I don't participate in senior moments. My vision is sharp and clear. My hearing is restored. My joints are pain-free. I'm delivered from arthritis. My immune system is healthy. My cholesterol count is normal. My organs function properly. Body, you are healed and whole in Jesus' name. On the back side, for, on the other side for wealth, the blessings of the Lord makes rich. I'm blessed coming in and going out. I'm above and not beneath. I'm the head and not the tail. I am the lender and not the borrower. I bring my tithes into the storehouse. You know what that means? That means you got to show up. you got to show up because you're going to bring them. Yes. I bring my tithes into the storehouse. The windows of heaven are open to me, and the Lord rebukes the devourer. I'm furnished in abundance for every good work and donation. Every seed I sow comes back to me multiplied. I'm highly favored of the Lord. The work of my hands prosper, and I have creative ideas. Anybody here take a shower? <laughs> You take a shower. Yes. Okay. Whew, that's good. That's good. You're on the front row there. <laughs> I have a little packet here. It's called my daily power bar for healing. It's filled with healing scriptures. And then there's a prayer in the back. And I'm going to be showing you some illustrations as I teach today. But this is one of the prayers that I pray that is so powerful. For let's just say, for example, you might have a fear or cancer, whatever it is. Spirit of, 
infirmity, whatever it is. In the name of Jesus, I pull you down from your position of authority. I break the power of assignment you have against me, for it is written. And then you go back and you find one of those healing scriptures that bears witness with you, and then, then you decree it. In the gray sweater. Yeah. <laughs> You know, these are great Christmas gifts to buy for somebody, you know, as well. <laughs> this is one of the uh, first books I wrote. I used to live in the Swiss Alps. My first assignment from God was to, to move to the Swiss Alps. Now, you, I'm, I know it sounds glamorous, but, you know, um, I'm there all alone. It's, it's a lonely work, and I did it for three, three years, um, but it was the most awesome. That was my very first assignment, and I moved there with one partner, $15 a month to live to Switzerland. It was my cousin. She, she trusted me. <laughs> and God just did miraculous things. Just miraculous. I mean, I had Bible schools, uh, conferences, everything. It was just great. But this little book, it talks about, it talks a lot about intimacy with God. It's my daily delight. You know, we need to have intimacy with Father God. And it talks about how to develop intimacy, but how you can block intimacy but how to remove the blockage. And then there's scriptures in here for healing, for your finances, uh, faith confessions. You know, one scripture in here says, the spirit of truth lives in me and guides me. Therefore, I have wisdom in every situation I encounter today. You know, I'm, um, for 19 years in my, my, well, I don't say my spare time, but I serve my community as a volunteer police chaplain. I actually have my own bulletproof vest. I look like the Hulk. <laughs> but I have my own police uniform, and I drive in the police cars with the officers. My number one job is you're a second pair of eyes. And um, I was with one police officer. He was a rookie. He'd only been with the department um, six months. And I was with him this one particular night. It was the first time he had a ride along. I was his first ride along. And uh, he was a Christian. And it just seemed like God just blessed that evening. We talked so much about God and we prayed together that we only had three calls that whole night. It was just a divine appointment from God. And then he wanted to know about Bible school. And I says, well, you're just, you know, you just got out of the police academy and your wife just had your first baby. Uh, instead of packing up and moving away to go to, because I went to Bible school, at Kenneth Hagin Bible School. Anybody ever heard of Kenneth Hagin? Sat at his feet every day. Um, but anyway, I says, you can do correspondence. He says, oh, that would be great. I'd like to do correspondence. I says, I'll bring you some information. So the next day, I'm going to get ready to go out with, on, with his, uh, in his ride-along again. But that morning, the Holy Spirit said, don't go today. I said, well, Lord, I'm just going to give him some Bible school information. But if you don't want me to go, I won't go. It's not about logic and reasoning. and not, It's not about anything, but you obey the leading of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of truth lives in me. And guides me. Therefore, I have wisdom in every situation I encounter today. And for such a time as this, you need to know you're listening to the Holy Ghost. I said, Lord, I'll, I'll just give it to him later on that week. And then I got to work in my office, and I looked at the clock, and I thought, oh, goodness, it's 3 o'clock. i got to get, get dressed and get to the police department. And the Holy Spirit said, remember, not today. I said, Oh, that's right, Holy Spirit. I, I wasn't rebelling. I just forgot. And I love that scripture where he says, I will put you in remembrance. And the Holy Spirit said, remember, not today. That was at 3 o'clock, 5.05, that police officer was shot and murdered. Aww. I'd have been right there in the car. No one knew that but the Holy Spirit. And later, um, the sergeant called me in the office because that was our first murder in Oceanside in 100 years. And he said, Marilyn, I need to know how, how would you have handled that situation? I said, well, first I get on the phone, I call for backup. He said, yes. Well, what would you do second? I said, second, <laughs> I'd be on the floor of the car because I'm not allowed to use a gun. I'm just not, we're not allowed to do that as a chaplain. I said, I'd been on the floor with all that because there was a lot of gunfire and I would have gotten on the floor of the car. And at that point, I, I already knew what the sergeant was going to say, but he said, in that case, uh, the car would have been your coffin. Because after the, this criminal who had just gotten out of prison already just murdered the police officer, he came and stole the police car. There's a loaded rifle in the front, and I'd have been sitting right there. And he had no mercy just because of this chaplain. Had no mercy. He would never have mercy. Only the Holy Spirit knew that. So that's why it's so critical that you learn to listen 
Don't let logic or reasoning get in the way. You listen to what the Holy Spirit says, whether it makes sense to you or not. Because look how many things are going on all the time. And, you know, sometimes people say, well, that person was in the wrong place at the wrong time. Let me tell you, there's not a right time to be in the wrong place. <laughs> if it's the wrong place, honey, it's always the wrong time. <laughs> and the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. He always takes you to the right place all the time. Over here. <laughs> Who doesn't have one? Way in the back over there. I don't want to leave anybody out. This book, this is my latest book. It's called My Three Miracles. So I was miraculously healed of cancer, raised from my deathbed from malaria, and stood on the word of God for the disappearance of a fast-growing tumor. And so in all three cases, well, the, first, the cancer and malaria, I was beyond the help of the doctors. I was told I was going to die in both cases. But with God. But God and his word. But then when I was standing on the word of God for the disappearance of a tumor, it was the day before I had to have surgery. I said, no, nope. I give it no place. And it was gone when they did the x-ray. Wow. But it talks about the journey. It's, you know, miracles don't, it's just not just poof. You know, I was preaching one time at a whole long, a week-long seminar, and this lady says, I don't want to do all that stuff. I just want poof. And I said, honey, poof isn't going to happen for you. <laughs> God doesn't do poof. So, <laughs> but uh, it, it's a journey, and you need to know the journey. And in here, and I'm going to use some illustrations today, but I actually have the illustrations in this book. And this book is it's such an encouragement. But anybody over here? Over here in the front row? Yeah, in the blue sweater? Thank you. One last thing. I didn't mean to spend all this time on this. You can't have this one because it's my, I forgot to bring a new copy for you. <laughs> but this is guidelines praying for the sick. You need to know how to pray for the sick because there's so many different situations in praying for the sick. But there has to be a time of preparation. You don't just go to a hospital to pray for someone who's dying right off the golf course. You need to have some time of preparation and listen to what the Holy Spirit's telling you. But there's one a section in here called Why Some Don't Receive Healing. You need, the more you understand why people don't receive healing, it helps you to understand how more efficiently you understand God's will and his ways and how they work so that you can help somebody else. Because when you're praying for people, you want, they want to feel the confidence that you have. And you'll have confidence when you understand his will and his ways. Amen. So I just wanted to share all that. But, Father, we thank you so much for your word today. And, Lord, as I speak, I pray that I will speak with simplicity, with clarity, with accuracy. We thank you for utterance. I thank you for the anointing upon every person, that you anoint their eyes to see, their ears to hear, and their heart to be receptive to all of your word today in Jesus' name. You know, sometimes people ask me, well, how can I confess God's word on healing? How can I say I'm healed when my body says I'm sick? Well, that's a good question and has a very simple answer. How can I say I'm healed when my body says I'm sick? Because it is written. Isaiah 53, 5 says, by his stripes you are healed. And 1 Peter 2, 24 says, by his stripes you were healed. So if the Bible says you are and you were, then honey, you is. <laughs> I know that's not proper language, but you is. He says you are, you were, so you is. So, you see, we have to see ourselves as the Word of God says you are. You have to see yourself as the Word of God says you are. See, the eye of faith sees first what the natural eye does not yet see. Faith is the eye that sees the invisible. Faith is the ear that hears the inaudible. The hand, the faith of hand, it grabs hold of the intangible. And faith is the power that does the miracles, that does the impossible. So we have to live by faith. You have to walk by faith and not by sight. What does that mean to walk by faith and not by sight? It means that you have to walk by the truth and not by facts. You walk by the truth. Jesus says, my words are truth. 
So you have to know what the truth says, and you have to walk by truth because the facts are going to speak really loud. Logic and reason is going to scream at you, but you have to know the truth because it's the truth that sets you free. Amen. I never talk against doctors because God uses doctors. God can anoint doctors as much as he can anoint an evangelist or pastor or anybody. God uses doctors. But doctors can only treat. Jesus is the healer. I like what it says in Luke 18, 17, 18, 27. The things that are impossible with men are possible with God. Or you could say it like this. The things that are impossible with a doctor is possible with God. There's never a hopeless situation with God. Never, 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 never. But it's through faith that you activate the power of the healer. Amen. Because he wants you healed even more than you want it. <laughs> he wants you healed because it gives him glory. It gives him glory. When I was 28 years old, and I'd been in church all my life, since 23 days old, <laughs> but I never heard one message on healing. Never. Our, our church didn't really pray for the sick. Um, I, I was there, but we, we, I didn't learn too much except two valuable things. I learned that God loved me, and I learned that God was good. And so at the age of 28, I had a very rare form of cancer. I had cancer of the appendix. I was told later I was approximately the eighth person in the entire United States to ever be recorded of that kind of cancer. So it's very, very rare for doctors to detect it. So I'd been sick for several months and just getting worse and worse. And the doctors, Marilyn, I don't know what's wrong with you, but I'm going to put you back in the hospital. And this time we're going to do exploratory surgery and maybe we'll find the problem. The nurse came in to prep me for surgery, but not knowing what was wrong with me, she gave me a wrong procedure. And that procedure caused my appendix to rupture. And it actually felt like the volc a volcano was about to erupt on the inside of me. I felt very sick, very nauseated. I managed to get out of my bed and get into the restroom. And I saw the emergency button. I thought, I need to hit that button. I've got to call for help. Twice I reached out to hit that button, and twice my hand, my finger just bounced away. It was like boing, boing. I couldn't, I couldn't contact the button. I thought, I need to hit the button. So I took my whole hand to reach out, and suddenly I realized, well, there's a wall here. I kept bumping into a wall. It was an invisible wall between my hand and that emergency button. And I'm thinking to myself, now that does not compute. I thought, I, I, I no more than had the thought invisible wall when I heard an audible voice of the Lord. The Lord spoke to me and he said, your time is up. Under your present condition, you are destined to die. That's a strong report when it's coming from God, not the doctor. And then he, then he paused for a moment and then he spoke a second time. He says, your life has been removed from the hands of mankind. Your condition is now beyond the help of the medical profession. And I knew it had something to do with that wrong procedure. And then he spoke the third thing, and it was most beautiful of all because he began to quote from the Gospel of John. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And then he said, through me, you can change your destiny. You don't have to die. Now, this took place 40 years ago this coming Tuesday, <laughs> December 7th, Pearl Harbor. That is how I remember it. <laughs> um, but, um, and I said, Lord, I don't know anything about healing. I'd never been taught one thing. I said, my knowledge of healing is zero. I said, but, Lord, I do know that you love me and that you're good to me. And if you're telling me that you have a healing for me, I take it. Now, I wasn't sure what to expect to happen because I had zero knowledge of healing. But it just seemed at that moment that my pain magnified and fear wanted to grip me. You know, if you don't have knowledge of something, it's easy to get into fear. And I don't know how I knew it, but just somehow I knew don't give place to fear. And I took my left hand and I grabbed my stomach. And then with my right hand, I reached out to hold on to the support bar on that hospital wall there because I thought I'm going to, I'm going to, I actually thought the pain could kill me but I was holding on so I wouldn't fall to the floor. 
and everything within me, I cried out to God. I said, God, help me, help me, help me. And at that moment, the scripture in Isaiah 41, 13 came alive. It says, for I, the Lord your God, will take hold of your right hand. Fear not, I will help you. Is that not just the most awesome scripture, Pastor Jesse, when you're crying out for help? He says, I will help you. And at that moment, I literally felt Jesus take hold of my right hand. I looked over at my hand. I couldn't see Jesus, but I could feel his fingers and his thumb. And he squeezed my hand. And it was a gentle squeeze, but at the same time, there was so much authority in that touch. And I began to sense agape love like I've never experienced in all my life. And then all of a sudden, heat came, started coming out of his hand into my hand. And that heat, I, it was almost like watching mercury in a thermometer. That heat raised up my arm. And when it got to my shoulder, the best way I can describe it is the motion of lift continued. And the Lord lifted my spirit out of my body. Now, how many of you know that you are a spirit, you have a soul? I didn't know that. I didn't know anything about spirit, soul, and body. I didn't know squat diddly, hardly. <laughs> but... He lifted my spirit out of my body and opened my eyes to look into the spirit realm, and I saw my spirit. And those are the illustrations I'm going to share with you today because it will, I'm, I know it's going to really bless you and help you to really grab hold of healing. But Jesus, while he was holding my hand, Jesus began to teach me about healing, which has become the main thrust of my ministry. But when he finished holding my hand, he let go, and I was instantly back in my body. And I took a hold of my stomach, and I thought, I'm healed. I mean, I didn't even know what I was healed of yet. I just knew I'd been touched by God. There was zero pain. And all I wanted to do was go back to my bed and worship. I didn't want to talk to anybody. I wanted to stay in that cocoon of just being touched by the power of my healer. And I just, I just went back to my bed and worshiped. About an hour later, an orderly came to take me to the operating room with me knowing nothing. I didn't say anything because I, did, I didn't know how to explain what <laughs> happened to me. But <clears throat> went into surgery. The next thing I knew, I'm back in the recovery room, and the doctor came in to talk to me, and he said, Marilyn, something must have happened to you during the operation. He said, because during surgery, I found cancer, but the cancer wasn't attached to anything. I saw that little clump of cancer. I just reached and I went, huh. I just picked it up and took it out. I didn't have to cut anything. <laughs> he said, you don't need chemotherapy. You don't need radiation. It wasn't attached to anything. It was, he said, something, ha he, I think he tried to say somebody, he, but he kept saying, something happened. I know something happened to you. He said, because, and then back then they would admit if they gave you a wrong procedure. He says, you know, we gave you a wrong procedure and it should have killed you. I don't know why it didn't kill you, but something <laughs> happened to you. <laughs> and then later, when I was all alone again, I heard the Lord speak to me. Wow. You know, the Bible says he knows us by our name. And I heard him whisper my name. And he said, Marilyn, when I was holding your hand, I was also holding back your appendix from rupturing. So the doctor could go in and remove the cancer in its entirety because I wanted you to know exactly what I did for you. God is good and God is love and he is not a respecter of persons. So I'm going to ask three fun gentlemen to come up here and help me. <laughs> Let's see. What are we doing? He's, he, boy, he's, he's ready to go here. And this is fun because God, God's a fun God. Don't feel bad. I'm going to call a fourth one in a little while. Okay. You can, hold, you can be my spirit. Rick, you hold on to that side near my soul. Excuse me. Oh, my fingers are bent here. Michael, you can hold that. You, let everybody over there see that. Now, don't the guys look nice holding these? So everybody over here can see. Ouchie, that that's okay. <laughs> Amen. 
So you are a spirit being. Hold it up real high. You are a spirit. The, the spirit is the part of you that is translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of heaven. That is the part of you that is born again. That is the part of you that worships the Lord. We have to worship in what? Spirit and in truth. This is what truly worships the Lord. Now, you have a soul, which is your mind, your emotions, and your freedom of choice. Your soul must be renewed to the word of God every day because the word has to be fresh. And I have these two attached for one specific purpose. Whether you make your bed in heaven or hell, your spirit and soul are always going to be together. You'll know where you're at. But they need to be in harmony because if these two are not in harmony, if your spirit wants to go with the word of God, but your mind and your emotions want to follow logic and reasoning, they're distracted with the pain and the symptoms that keep flooding in, they're going to argue that this is the greatest warfare you'll ever be in is your mind. So that you have to have your mind renewed every day. So it's always in agreement with the spirit. Just like when, when with that police officer, my mind said, well, why would you, why wouldn't you not go? But you can't go with what the mind says. You don't go with logic and reason. You always stay. They have to be together. Now, this is the, the house. Your spirit and soul live in a house. Now, not everybody is going to have an out-of-the-body experience, but every one of you live in a house. could be a single-story house, a two-story house, but you're not in that house right now. So you are actually having an out-of-the-house experience. <laughs> Therefore, you don't know what's happening in your house because you're not there. If you go home today and you stand in front of your house, and God forbid, but if your house was on fire, you would witness the destruction of your house, but you wouldn't be burned because you're not in the house. But if it's 2 o'clock in the morning and you're in this house and it's on fire, you will feel the effects of that fire. Why? Because you're in the house. You, spirit man... You live in this house 24-7. If this house is burning up with a fever, you're going to know it. If this house is in pain because it broke an arm, you will know it because you, this is the real you, you live in this house 24-7. Now, just like this house has an exterior, window, doors, roof, it has an interior, electrical wiring, plumbing, furniture, it has an outside and an inside. This house has an exterior. Hair, nose, skin, all kinds of things make up the outside of this house. But this house also has an interior. Heart, liver, kidneys, spleen, all kinds of things make up the inside of this house. But this is you. So right now, are we all on the same page? Yes. I'll call you back later, and I'm going to promote you for holding these special, special <laughs> illustrations. So be ready to come back. <laughs> Does that help you? I want you to turn, if you have Bibles with you, to Romans 8. Romans chapter 8, verse 6. Romans 8, verse 6. The mind, the mind governed, or you could say controlled or ruled by the flesh, or we could say by the facts, is death. Now, that word death is talking about defeat. In other words, the mind governed by facts is defeat. So you can be saved, filled with the Holy Ghost, but live a defeated life. Saved, filled, and defeated. We're supposed to be saved, filled, and triumphant. So then it goes on to say, but the mind controlled, governed, ruled by the Spirit of God, or we could say by truth, it is peace, healing, wholeness, victory. It's always on the victory side. So the mind must be renewed to the God, to the word of God, so that it's always following the spirit of truth. Amen? In Proverbs 4.13, it talks about take firm hold of instructions, or we could say truth, because it says truth will keep you. Truth is your life. Truth is what gives you victory. You have to follow God's instructions. And then in, in Proverbs chapter 4, beginning in verse 20, he begins to give us his instructions. He says, my son, 
give attention to my words. Now, when you go to a doctor, you're going to get a doctor's report. When you come to the word of the Lord, you get the Lord's report. So it worked, we could say it like this, my son, pay attention to my report. You're going to have two reports, but he said, I want you to focus on my report. I can remember when I was a little girl in grade school and in Nebraska, I'm a corn husker, and uh, sometimes the teacher would open the windows and it would be hot and you could hear the band outside practicing or some of the other kids on the playground and the teacher would slam her hand on the desk, students, boys and girls, pay attention because she knew we were being distracted with the noise outside. God knows you're going to be distracted with those symptoms with those negative reports that keep flooding in. You're going to get distracted with the pain. So he's saying, pay attention. Don't get distracted with those symptoms. So pay attention to my report. Incline your ear to my report. Don't let my report depart from your eyes. See, you see, if you were to accumulate all the books in the entire world, all the books in the entire world, you would only find one, only one out of all the books in the entire world that has been breathed with the breath of God. This is the only one that has been breathed with the breath of God. And he, he said, you keep it before your eyes because you see, it's alive. It's alive. And you can be reading something that you've read maybe a thousand times, but one day, It's like those words just jump off the page at you. Why? Because it's alive. And that's why it says you keep it before your eyes at all times. And then keep it in the middle of your heart. So when you're renewing your mind and you're feeding your spirit on this truth, it gets into your spirit. And Jesus says in John 6, 63, my words are spirit and my words are life. So when you speak the word of God and you've put it in there, then life comes out. So you have to have it before you get it into your heart. And then I like what it says in Proverbs 4.23, above all else, guard your heart. What are you supposed to guard your heart against? The facts. (laughs) Guard your heart against the facts because facts breed fear And fear is the enemy of your faith. I'm always telling people, if you get a negative report from the doctor, do not, say this with me, do not. not. Say, I will not. not. Amen. I will not go to Mr. Google. (laughs) Because, see, Mr. Google only has facts that he got from another human being. Mr. Google can only give you facts that is going to breed, and I'm serious about that. It's going to give you more fear, and fear is the enemy of your faith. Don't go to the library. Don't research anything but this. How can I say I'm healed when my body says I'm sick? Because it is written. It is written. You know, it matters to God. It costs him his life that you can be healed. So we have to appropriate what he has said to us. Amen. So don't go to Mr. Google. So when you come into agreement with what God has said to you about any promise, anything about healing, when you come into agreement with the word of God, you have come into agreement with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit lives on the inside of you and me. So when you've come into agreement with the word, you've come into agreement with the Holy Spirit who also represents the anointing of God. So we could say the anointing lives on the inside of us. What what is the anointing? It's the power of God. It's the burden-removing, yoke-destroying power of God that lives on the inside of you and me. But that power is not automatically activated. You see, there's electrical power in this room. The first person that came to church today, they turned on the light switch because it was dark in here. But On Friday, nobody called the power company to disconnect the power. The power was still here. See, power can be present but not activated. You have to activate it with your faith. You have to turn on that switch if you want to utilize this power. Even though it's available, if you don't use it, it's inactive. Amen. In Romans chapter 8, verse 11, Romans 8, 11, 
But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, amen, then he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal body by his spirit that dwells in you. Now, God the Father, God the Holy Spirit, uh, God the Father and God and Jesus, excuse me, they live in heaven. But God the Holy Spirit lives inside of you and me. That means God has imparted one third of himself to live on the inside of mankind. To me, that's beyond awesome. Yeah. One third of the Godhead lives on the inside of you and me. That's beyond awesome. We know that bombs are very powerful. And they're very destructive. A bomb not only destroys its target, but it destroys everything else around the target. But a bomb never has and never will be powerful enough to reach the pit of hell. That's never going to happen. No bomb is ever going to be powerful enough to reach the pit of hell. But the same spirit that did reach the pit of hell, raised Christ from the dead, lives on the inside of you and me. You got more power than a bomb. And that power has the ability to zero in on a malignant tumor, destroy all those cancer cells, and never harm any healthy tissue around it. That's the kind of power you have that you have to activate it. It doesn't happen automatically. Amen. All things are power with, with God, but not automatic. Amen. Luke 18, 27, all things are possible with God, but we have to utilize the power. You know, I forgot to check my time, Pastor Jesse. Are we doing okay? Yeah, doing okay. We are. Thank you, Pastor Penny. <laughs> I told her earlier. <laughs> I just realized I always like to stay within my boundaries here. Um, but yeah, Matthew, uh, Matthew 19, 26, all things are possible with God, but not automatic. They're all possible, but not automatic. So how can I say I'm healed when my body says I'm sick? Because it is written. Therefore, the things that are possible for you and for me is totally based upon our capacity to believe and activate truth. Amen. In John chapter 8, verse 32, if you want to turn there, John 8, 32, it says, and you shall know the facts. Whoops. No. <laughs> So you shall know the truth, and the truth will set you free. See, the facts will never set you free. Facts will never set you free. You have to know the truth. Then in Colossians chapter 3, verse 16, I want you to look at this scripture because it's very powerful. Colossians 3, 16. Let the word of Christ, I'd like to also say it like this, let the word of truth dwell in you richly. The word richly is so critical because that's telling us what level to have the word dwelling in you. If the word is in you on a rich level, you're going to get rich level results. But if the word is in you on a low level, you're going to get low level results. If it's in you on a medium level, medium level results. But God specifically wants us to have rich level results. So he said, let the word of truth of Christ live in you on a rich level so you will get rich level results. See, the word is infused with God. He is the healer. He is the word. You know, living here in California, we have earthquakes. And when they build those tall buildings in Los Angeles or San Diego or um, wherever, you know, throughout California, uh, San Francisco, they build those buildings to be as earthquake-proof as they can. Do you know when they do it? Before the earthquake, <laughs> not in the middle of the earthquake. That's why at all times you want the Word of God in you on a rich level at all times because the wise man built his house upon the rock before the storm. Now, you can still be healed in the middle of the storm, <laughs> but you want to be wise. You want to have, you need, need, Brother Hagen always said, you need to be strong in faith, healing, and the leading of the Holy Spirit. And they all three work together. They all three overlap one another. I've been to Africa 
on many occasions to preach, and I've actually had to sleep in a tent in lion territory. It was not my favorite hotel. <laughs> But I've been as close, I was as close to a cheetah as I am to Pastor Jesse right now. This cheetah had just killed a Thompson gazelle, devouring the gazelle. I saw the blood coming out of the cheetah's mouth. I thought, it's a little close here. <laughs> but I've watched the lions when they attack a prey. You know what kind of prey they attack? A weak prey. Why? Because it's easy to devour a weak prey. Well, the Bible tells us in 1 Peter 5, 8, that the devil, he goes around like a roaring lion. He's looking for Christians who have the word in them on a low, weak level because he knows, wow, I can devour those Christians because they're weak. So that's why the Lord said, you let that word in you on a rich level. Because the devil will devour weak Christians. See it all the time, amen? We need to have the word in us on a rich, rich level. Once again in John 6, 63, it is the spirit that gives life. The flesh profits nothing. But the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. I said earlier, you have to speak the word of God from your spirit. And the only way you're going to speak it from your spirit is by putting it in you on that rich level every day. It gets deeper and deeper and richer and richer. So then when you speak the word, you can't, if you're just speaking from here to here, words are flippant. Oh, I'm healed. Hallelujah. I'm healed. That means nothing. But when you say one, one thing from here, <clears throat> God puts life on it. So you have to have it in you on that rich, rich level. Because the word of God is not magic. It is not a magic potion. I'm healed. Hallelujah. I'm healed. No, no. It's truth. It's rich. You have to speak it from a rich, rich level. And it's what you say at midnight when pain begins to attack your body and fear wants to grip you and it's dark in that room. That's where you're going to win or lose the battle. Not having 100 people praying for you. Not calling pastor when he's away on vacation. It's what you're going to do at midnight that wins the battle. If you have the word in you on a rich, rich level. I want my helpers to come up again so I can promote. <laughs> I'm faithful to my word. Yay. You all know who you are. <laughs> are we having fun? Yes. You learning anything? Yes. Amen. When you go to a doctor for a physical examination, which part is he going to examine? The house. The house. This, this, this. Right. Physical examination, either the inside or the outside. Now, that doctor, he's going to say, let's just imagine he says to you, oh, I'm so sorry. After your, after your physical, I realized... You have tuberculosis. You have diabetes. You have allergies. He says, you have. Aha. Which one's you? This is you. Do you have diabetes? No. Do you have allergies? No. Do you have cancer? No. But if you don't have your mind renewed, and the doctor says, you have, you're going to take ownership of that. And you're going to call the pastor. You're going to call the church. Oh, please pray for me, pray for me, pray for me. Because the doctor said, I have. And you take ownership of that. Mark eleven twenty three 23 says, you will have whatever you say. See, in Proverbs 6, it says, you snare yourself with your own words. You set yourself your own trap. You have to remember, this is you. It's just like if you take your car to the mechanic. He says, well, Pastor Jesse, you need a new transmission. <laughs> Pastor Jesse's going to call <clears throat> Pastor Mike and say, you know what? I need a new transmission. The, the, the mechanic says, I got a bad transmission. I'm not even sure where it is. I've got, I, he said I had a bad transmission. <laughs> no, he's talking about your car. <laughs> just like at my house, every two years I have my house checked for termites. Well, the termite inspector, he says, Marilyn, 
sorry to tell you, you have termites. I'm not going to take that personally. I don't have termites. I don't have cancer. I don't have diabetes. I don't have whatever. You have to remember, only your house. Now we're going to promote. <laughs> help me, help me, help me. When we pray, are we doing okay, Pastor Jesse? Yes, yeah, we're great. When we pray, our prayers usually go in one of two directions. We're either asking Jesus to do something he's already done. Jesus, heal me, heal me. Calvary was done so well, it never has to be repeated. It will never have to be repeated. So you can't keep asking Jesus to do something he's already done. But sometimes we ask him to do something he's told us to do. So we need to pay attention. Now, I'm going to have one more person. You want to help me, brother? Being you won a prize, you might as well keep on working. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to have you stand in front. No offense, he's just a Short little bit. Short people in front. Yeah. yeah. And we're the yeah, same, so, yeah. yeah, so, okay. <laughs> I want to have you stand right here. <laughs> Okay, now okay. we're going to role play. Yeah, sometimes, yeah, you know, at Christmas you have a drama. Well, we're having a drama today. Drama. So you get to be Jesus. Whoa. <laughs> after the cross, after the oh, cross. Uh, yeah, he's out. Uh, not you, he's Jesus. Oh. <laughs> you, Rick is going to be the Holy Ghost. Uh, uh, Michael. Michael. Michael's going to be God. Oh, is your what? wife here? Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, <laughs> It's just, just for a short time. <laughs> just for a short time, he'll be gone. What is your name? Matt. Matt. Matt's going to be the pillar of the church. Oh, sure. Aw. Are you sure? <laughs> Amen. 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 I, I will be the devil because I don't like volunteers for the devil. So I will be the devil. So, what was your name? Matt. Matt, you're strong in the Lord now. Remember? Yeah. So, one day, the devil attacks Matt with sickness and disease. I mean, he's really sick. And he turns to Jesus. Jesus and he's Jesus. begging, begging, but nothing happens. But he's begging, Jesus, Jesus, get into the act oh. here. <laughs> Please! <laughs> he scared. is... He is pleading, he is begging the whole church. Now, this is serious, though, but the whole church is praying with him. Jesus healed him, but nothing is happening. Why? Why? <laughs> is that good? Rise, Matthew. That was very good. <laughs> but nothing is happening. Why? Because he's asking begging Jesus to do something Jesus already did. So he's getting nowhere. But then one day as he's renewing his mind, reading Luke 10, 19, where Jesus says, Matthew, Matt, I have given you authority to trample on serpents, on scorpions, over all the power of the enemy, over sickness and disease. I have given you that authority. Now, when he was begging to Jesus, he was still born again. He didn't lose his salvation, but he's saved, filled, and defeated. All right. But now he's taken his authority. Look what happens when he begins to take his authority and has that word in him on his rich level, and he begins oh. to speak the word of God. Holy Ghost, put, no, stay right here. Don't, don't run from the Holy Ghost. <laughs> put, your, put your hands on his shoulders. Right. The Holy Spirit was living in him the whole time but he didn't activate the Holy Spirit because he wasn't applying the word. Now he speaks the word of God from his spirit, and now he activated the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is his helper, not his doer, the helper. So he's going to help him to not get weary in well-doing. He's going to give him wisdom when he reads the word of God because the Holy Spirit is our helper 24-7. you got to tap into him. Yeah. Now, look what else happens to him. Jesus, put your hands on his shoulders also. The Bible says that Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father, yeah, yeah. ever interceding for Matt. I think we forget that Jesus is always praying for you and for me. Right. 
That is awesome. Every moment, Jesus is lifting us up. Look what else happens to Matt. God, put your hands up here. Both hands, God, get into it. <laughs> the Bible says that God looks over his words and performs them. What he speaks. Now, hold that thought, you guys. A moment ago, you saw Matt. He was saved, filled, and defeated. You look at him right now, all of heaven is backing him up. All of heaven is backing him up. When the devil looks at him, the devil doesn't see flesh and blood. The devil sees a spirit of force. He sees a spirit of light. He sees the entire armor of God. He sees all of heaven backing him up. And when he resists the devil, mm. the devil has to flee. When he takes authority over the devil, that is not an option for the devil. It is written. You resist the devil, and he shall flee. Yes. Wow. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. We have to apply the word of God. You can't be flippant. You can't be lazy with it. Too many lazy people. You can't be lazy. Yet it, took, it cost Jesus his life to give us this word, and we have to apply it. You have to let the eye of faith see what Jesus already bought and purchased for you. Father, we thank you so much. We thank you, thank you, thank you for Jesus he was born to die that we might live. We thank you that you have given us faith. Each person has faith. Help us to feed our faith, fuel our faith on your word. Lord, I pray that this word takes deep root into each and every heart today, that they'll never be the same again in Jesus' name. And if there's anybody here, if you need healing, do I have time to pray for people? Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I'd like to ask, first of all, if there's anybody here, if, if, uh, if you've never asked Jesus to come into your heart, I'd like you just to close your eyes and bow your head. Sometimes we just assume everybody that comes is, is saved. And if you've never asked Jesus to come into your heart, that is the greatest miracle you will ever, ever have. There's no miracle that supersedes. Being healed of cancer is not greater than being saved. Because when you're saved, the Spirit of God takes residence on the inside of you. When you ask Jesus to come into your heart, you are guaranteed two things. Number one, you are guaranteed that when you leave this earth, you will go to heaven immediately to be with the Father. The second thing, you are guaranteed that while you're on this earth, the Holy Spirit will be in you and with you every breathing moment. And all you have to do is believe that Jesus is the Son of God. And then he died on the cross and he rose again from the dead just for you. So with your eyes closed, no one's looking around but me. If you have never asked Jesus to come into your heart, or if you have but you've drifted away and you know that you're just not in, in fellowship like you should be, I'd like to pray with you today. So on either one of those uh, calls, if you've never asked Jesus into your heart, lift your hand real high. I'm the only one that's looking around. Anybody at all, you've never asked Jesus into your heart. Anybody at all? Or maybe you have, there I see a couple hands. Or maybe you have and you've drifted away. Today the Holy Spirit is just wooing you back. If that's you, I want you just to lift up your hand. Anybody at all, you just feel the Holy Spirit wooing you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That one that lifted their hands, if you'd like, you can come up here and I will pray with you if you'd like to come up here. Pray with you if you'd like to come up to give Jesus entrance into your heart. Anybody else? Don't hold back. You know, I was praying with her. I was witnessing to a man several, several months I had witnessed to him. He says, Marilyn, I'm just not ready. I'm not ready for that. He took off on his motorcycle, and about 10 minutes later, he was killed. It was all over. Went to hell. There was a man that was uh, at a, at a Reinhardt Bunky 
crusade. And he'd been turning his back on the Lord for a long time, but he went to that crusade that day. And he walked up that day. That day he went forward to give his heart to Jesus. And then he turned around to go back to his seat. He dropped dead. He made heaven by just three last steps. The last steps he took, he just made heaven. You don't know when it's going to be your last moment. Is there anybody else? Anybody else you want to have prayer? What's your name, brother? Nice to meet you, Chris. You want to stand up here? Let's all just lift out our hands towards Chris. You've never prayed this prayer before? I want to pray with you tonight, today. So everybody pray this prayer with Chris. And just repeat after me. You do believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Say, Dear Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart today. Forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me. Teach me your ways. Take my life and fill it in the way that you want me to live. Fill me with the power of the Holy Spirit. And I receive you now as my personal Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, Chris. I have a book on my back table. Rick, uh, what's my next step? I'm a new believer. Would you get that book off the, what's my next step? I'm just going to give you a book. And maybe they have other people that are praying for you. I just want to give you this one book. You can just take it over to him. If there's anybody here and you need healing in your body, you've got pain or you need healing, um, I'm going to just ask you to come forward, and I can pray with you. You can just come over here and stand if you need healing. You can stand over there, and I can walk over there later. But I want you to know that Jesus is the healer. I'm not the healer, but Jesus is the healer. And he wants you healed more than you want to be healed. I guess you guys can come over this way a little bit closer. But when I pray for you, just make a straight line facing me. But when I pray for you, I don't want you to be praying. This is the time for you to simply receive. And most, most healings are progressive. They're not instant. You can have an instant miracle, but most of them are progressive. But the moment we pray is the moment that it begins. And if you get a symptom at 3 o'clock this afternoon or something happens tonight or tomorrow morning, you might think, well, I guess it didn't work. No, it works. The word works. So from this moment on, you constantly give him thanks. You give him praise. Lord, I thank you that when hands were laid upon me, that healing process began. You have to hold on to that because once again, faith is the eye that sees the invisible. It's that hand that grabs hold of the intangible. And it's that, the faith that releases the power of the miracle. So in Jude 20, it says, build yourself up, praying in the Holy Ghost. You keep yourself built up. Amen. So I'm just going to pray with you right now. I just want you to close your eyes and just envision Jesus, the healer, touching your body. But don't you be praying. Father, I thank you for my brother right now. And I release the healing power to flow into every organ, every tissue, every cell in his body, bringing about a complete healing and a cure. Be thou made whole in Jesus' name. Amen. After I pray with you, you can be seated. Father, I thank you for my brother. In the name, it's above all other names, be thou made healed. For it is written by the stripes of Jesus, you are the healed of the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your healing power to flow. Every organ, every tissue, every part of her being, from the top of her head to the soles of her feet, be thou made whole. Thank you, Father God, for the Spirit of God coming upon this young boy. I release healing every part of your being, the top of your head to the soles of your feet. Be thou made whole, spirit, soul, and body. The name of Jesus, the healer. I release that healing power to flow right now. 
Be thou made whole, spirit, soul, and body. In the name of Jesus, 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 Jesus. Lord, I release peace, victory, healing, and wholeness. Be thou made whole, spirit, soul, and body. The name that's above all other names. I thank you, Father. I thank you that by your stripes, my brother is healed, whole, set free. I take authority over every malfunction, irregularity, abnormality. We break its hold, for by your stripes, he is the healed of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, 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 there's power in the name of Jesus. Be thou made whole in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. By his stripes, be thou made whole. The top of your head to the soles of your feet. In Jesus' name. The name, the power, and the blood of Jesus. I release peace, soundness of mind. I release the joy of the Lord. I release that healing balm of Gilead to flow in every part of your being. Be thou made whole. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I thank you, Lord. That he is satisfied with long, strong life in Jesus' name. Jesus, 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 be thou made whole, spirit, soul, and body. Father, I thank you for my brother, that no weapon formed against him will prosper, that by your stripes he is healed. Be thou made whole in Jesus' name, spirit, soul, and body. Hallelujah. Be thou made whole, spirit, soul, and body in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord. No weapon formed against her will prosper, that by your stripes she is healed healed and whole the name the name of Jesus be thou made whole spirit soul and body in Jesus name Lord I thank you for my brother that no weapon formed against him will prosper be thou made whole in Jesus name oh sorry the name it's above all other names be thou made whole, spirit, soul, and body. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus. Be thou made whole, spirit, soul, and body. The name, the name. Peace. Peace, peace, be thou made whole, spirit, soul, and body. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You're her healer. Be thou made whole, spirit, soul, and body. The name of Jesus, I release that healing power to flow. Be healed. In Jesus' name, the name of Jesus, be thou made whole, spirit, soul, and body. Be whole, be free. Hey, in the name of she's above praying for people, names, she's just finishing here. This is whole. beautiful, awesome. In God's Jesus moving. I love it. Um, I want to take an offering. Uh, we do this anytime we have a, a guest speaker. Um, there's an there's a the metal bucket in the back, and there's one up front here. Um, listen, you, you don't give to get. You don't give so that God heals you or that he, that he 
that he does something for you. Um, I just want to encourage you to sow into, in, into, into someone's life that has literally given her life to just to see God get his reward every, every time she shows up. And so, um, honestly, it's, it's a beautiful thing. If you just give, I promise you, where you sow, you will reap. Where you sow. And so if, if, if you, you were blessed by her teaching, if, if you receive just greater understanding, I tell you, I love that she just put this whole thing out from start to finish. I think we've gotten pieces of what she shared, right? Faith. And we've learned about the soul, maybe the spirit. But I tell you, they, she laid this out so beautifully that you could actually, we could actually understand it. And so honestly, I just want to encourage you, church, like um, whatever God's feeling you're leading you to do, honestly, I, I encourage you to ask the Lord. Don't just go off of feelings, but ask the Lord, would you have me give to, into her ministry this morning? And he might say $2. He might say $100. He might say $1,000. I don't know. Um, every dollar goes right to her. Um, I just, I, all I ask you to do is just be obedient with whatever the Father asks you to do. Um, I get if you're a student, you're not going to have $1,000 maybe, or maybe you do. Hallelujah. Um, just, I encourage you, let, uh, we're a generous church, we're abundant, and it's just fun to bless people. Um, anyway, just wanted to put that out there. Um, you can also give online. Um, if you give, if it says speaker, and then give the number, um, or through the app is even better, because you can actually select guest speaker through uh, our church app. So anyway, love you guys. Um, hang out in your seats for a little bit longer if you can until she's done here. Um, just stay engaged with the, with with what God's doing, and then uh, we'll we'll dismiss you when you need to.